Wow. Queen Melanie Fiona. Hi. It's so good to see you. Thank you. It's so good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. home. Welcome home. That's the best part. Yeah. I get to be home for a release, which is nice. Yeah. I mean, you're in L.A. these days, right? Yeah. And Say Yes, this is the EP and the single, which, by the way, is incredible. Thank you. And also two singles that we have. Two singles. Um, I Choose You. Yes. So we got the Neo Soul vibe, and we also have, like, the Lover's Rock vibe. Yes, Lover's Rock. You know, being from Toronto. It's a part of who you are. You have to know how to lovers rock. It's just, it doesn't matter where your people are from. You could be from Poland. You got to know how to <laughs> lovers rock if you're from Toronto. You know, being Caribbean, that's just the essence, I think, of what moves me, the vibration of what moves me. I don't go to, like, dance clubs. I go to reggae parties. Yeah, man. That's what I like. That's what I grew up in, basement parties. You know, so um, I Choose You is actually produced by, it's it's an all-produced uh, Canadian track. So mm -hmm. Akil Henry and Child, um, I co-wrote it with a really amazing songwriter who's also from New York, mm -hmm. Little Eddie. So the vibe of what the culture and the rock of that song is just it's very authentic yeah, to who Akeel's we are. Akeel's a man, by the way. Akeel. <laughs> Shout out to Akeel Henry. Shout out to Akeel. Yeah. I just want to kind of like rewind the tape and like have a really great conversation because it's been a while since we've actually spoken to you and seen what you've been... I mean, we know what you're up to. Podcasting. Yeah. You've got a beautiful family. Yes. What a moment. You know, I miss what you brought to the music sphere. And I also miss that time of like good R&B, good neo soul, mm -hmm. good love songs mm -hmm. and good music that we could like send to our girl and be like, this is the yes. song, I, this is how I feel about you yes. right now. And then she could send one back, well, this is how I feel about you. Yes. Is that what you're trying to bring back right now? Or is that where you are? Yeah, I think I've always been there. Um, and I think that that's kind of what makes me who I am mm -hmm. in a huge landscape of music. And there's so much to offer in music, especially in R&B. It's evolved so much. It's lo-fi, hi-fi, it's rap. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really kind of evolved since I put out my first two projects. So, you know, I think with these songs, I definitely am still carrying the essence of, I think, my foundation. But also I wanted to create music that I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. Music that I didn't feel like I could easily find and go to. Like, there's a few select artists that I do feel and love for the R&B that they give. But I feel this, this, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's not a vibe. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling. And the feeling is love. Mm -hmm. The feeling is vulnerability. The feeling is... I want to send this to somebody because this song makes me think of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've sung so many love ballads. I've sung so many big ballads. I've sung so many heartbreak ballads. This project is definitely created with intention and love and mindfulness and honestly, just a, a purpose of wanting to raise the vibration. I think the vibration back in like the 2000s and stuff was really, there was a high equity on expressing yourself. Oh, absolutely. And I feel like now because of social media and things like that, there's a high value on like getting it popping and being seen. Yes. Is that accurate? Yeah, I definitely think that there, there's a thing there, which is why me not being seen for so long was like, what, what, mm -hmm. what? But I think also what you said was, you know, it's been a long time, but it's it created this void, I think, for me in a healthy way mm -hmm. that allowed for people to be like, what's that thing? Damn, I missed those records. You know, I went back and ran that album. That mm -hmm. music was so good. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it created a healthy demand as opposed to like, you know, oh, we sick of seeing you or, oh, it's the same thing over and over again. It's like that old saying, like, you know, you don't know what you have till it's gone. Right. And sometimes you even as the creative and me as the creative, I needed to take a step back so that I could feel re-energized and reinvigorated about what I want to say and who I want to be in this industry now that I've seen how the industry, now I've seen how music has evolved and gone in so many different ways and finding my own place and knowing what my voice is mm -hmm. in this landscape. Um, I don't want to get lost. I want to have an identity. I want people to know I'm going to put on Melanie Fiona exactly when I know this feeling, mm -hmm. this concept, this conversation is what I'm trying to have. Okay, so yeah. now on that note, I want to talk about your journey. You know, there's a lot of things about Melanie Fiona that I'm not sure if you are aware of. Of course, you're a Toronto artist, a Canadian yeah. artist, you're Guyanese, big yeah. up to the Guyanese crew. But let's talk about the beginnings. The the group with Drake, a lot of people might not be aware that you were in a group with Drake 
really, really early on. Yeah, career. really early. Um, you know, I had a, I was actually in a girl group when I was a teenager here in Toronto. And it's funny because I, people call it a, a group with Drake. We kind of, we called ourselves the collective, the Renaissance, okay. because we actually never made music together as a group. We were just individual artists that came together to create show, to showcase music, mm -hmm. to support one another. So like if somebody was singing, there was another vocalist there. I was doing backgrounds. If I was singing, he was doing backgrounds. Drake would like hop on and do like a rap that he wrote or cover a rap song with a hook, an R&B hook, and we'd mm -hmm. sing. So we were covering songs while we were simultaneously all individually making our How'd own How'd you guys music. meet? Like Randomly, like my old manager who used to live here, she met him through this guy who used to own a supper club here who knew him and was like, you gotta meet these kids, you gotta meet Mel, like there's, they're, they're super talented, we mm -hmm. should bring them together. And so we did. And then we just started, it was literally right over here on Adelaide. It was an old place called Avocado Supper Club. Wow. And um, and we would just go down there and we would just perform. Like sometimes it would be five people in there, sometimes it'd be 50 people in there. So it just all depended. We would go there to basically like sharpen our chops, basically. Wow. And it was short lived. We had plans to kind of take it, um, but he was still doing television. I was still actively pursuing a record deal. We were all kind of on our own journeys, like I said. So it just kind of dissolved into, I think, what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And like, I think the timing of things, the timing is everything. But when we look back and when I look back, definitely, and I think about that and then go on to see the things that we've both done. I mean, mm -hmm. he's he's Drake. Mm -hmm. He's a household name. And you're about to going. Yeah, thank like, you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me not. Let's, well, let's put a pin in that. You are definitely Melanie Fiona. Thank you. Okay. Um, but I think it really does. It's one of those things, especially coming from a city like Toronto, mm -hmm. when you can see where you've gone, the journey and the trajectory of where things go went that you never even could have imagined at that time. It's such a beautiful thing to look back as young people in the city, knowing what we were working towards and like always having that starting point together and really being like, that was, that was a time and it was special. And it, it, it says a lot, I think, about the relationships and the dynamic of people from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Because the relationships run long. We have encountered each other at some point in this life if you grew up in the city. And so you're kind of all in it together, even if you don't feel like you are all the time. Oh, no, I I, I get it. Yeah, My right? short time here, I realized that, like, it's a small circle. Yes. And, like, you just run into the same people all the time. Yes. It's not bad, but it's just, like, this is the collective. Yes. This is what it is. And we can either try to go together. And I think previous to that time, we've heard all the stories of like, it was so hard. Like the industry, as far as especially in black music and especially R&B and hip hop, mm -hmm. like there was no support or structure for people to really make it here. So we had to leave. We all had to leave. You always have to go abroad. You got to cross the border. Um, I love that it's evolved to the point that artists get to keep their 416 area codes and don't got to give it up. And they get to stay home and home is, is here is the base. Mm -hmm. And then they go abroad to do that. So it's all, we're actually all working together even when we don't think we are. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's lay, laying a brick for the next person to come from here. And that's honestly the way progress has been able to be made in R&B and hip hop. Were there conversations in that collective of artists where you're like, yo, we're going to have to leave. Um, I think I got to get out of here. Was that a discussion? I mean, it? it wasn't a discussion. We actually had plans to try to take what we were doing in Toronto and kind of take it to the States and start doing it like in Village Underground or like things like that in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, we had that idea. But honestly, at that time, getting success in America or abroad was like that was the that was the pinnacle like mm -hmm. oh you're coming back from LA oh you just took a meeting in New York like it was still a thing that we were seeking like the validation the acceptance the success mm -hmm. across the border mm -hmm. you know so even then at that time we still felt like we had to but like I said now today if you're in people like Jesse Reyes or you know any the, they're here mm -hmm. they're here mm -hmm. Daniel Caesar they're here. here Drake is back here you know so it's it's a beautiful thing in the journey. Every every brick laid is important. You know, uh, one of my favorite parts of your journey, not just like the whole Neil Soul era, but was the Kanye West Glow in the Dark mm -hmm. tour. I think that was one of the greatest tours. It was such a good tour. Ever. Such a good tour. That was my first tour ever. Which is pretty crazy. Really crazy. Right? Really, really crazy. So what was it like? All right, can you walk me through when you got that call to be on the Kanye West Glow in the Dark tour and yeah. what it was like? Yeah, so um, my manager at the time over from Rock Nation, Jay Brown, mm -hmm. um, he called me, I was remember I was driving in Toronto and he's like, what's up, kid? And so he always used to call me, <laughs> what's up, kid? And um, he called me, he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, you going on a Kanye tour? And I, I remember I was driving, I was like, what? Because, I mean, Kanye is one of my favorite artists. Mm -hmm. Like, and at that time, it was just Oh, like, Glow in the Dark was Pete Kanye. I mean, it was just, I don't know, Pete Kanye for me... 
Oh, I mean, college. I mean, Pete Kanye is from the moment Kanye came out. I know. Like, it's, like that's a big debate. What is Pete Kanye? He, 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 Kanye just keeps creating his own beats. I know. That's the. I know. But for me, I, Glow in the Dark was special to me because I saw it in Chicago. Like, so it, it was. It was a special tour, and then yeah. he and then it's funny because I got the call and it was on. Um, it was a European leg, mm. so I was actually the only female artist on the whole tour. It was Kanye. There was a bunch of it was Kanye. Kid Cudi, Consequence, Mr. Hudson, and then The Roots. So then it's, and then it's me, like this new artist that Yo, no one's ever heard of. What is this tour? It's <laughs> oh, it was great. amazing. It was, it was such a great experience for me. It taught me a lot. Um, you know, all the things that go into what a tour is. And then, of course, I'm going out there. This is going to be a funny story. So, you know, as the opener, you don't get the bells and whistles that the headliner gets or even like the supporting headliner gets, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you, I'm out there on an iPod. Okay, tracks are being run from an iPod. I have a three-piece band, and we're playing with tracks off of an iPod, okay? So this is actually one of the best stories. So we're now in the last stop. It was Bercy Arena in in um, in Paris. This is my first time to Paris. I was so happy because Paris is my favorite city. And um, it's actually crazy because the Roots, their tour bus had gotten into an accident. Damn. Driving to that show. And that they came off the bus and still went on stage. That's and like crazy. they were bruised up, they were bandaged up, but they went out there and did that. So shout out to the roots. Just thank goodness they were all okay. But that show, the iPod skipped because the bass of the speaker <laughs> is on the speaker. And my whole show cut out as I'm performing in front of thousands of people at the arena. And I'm like, you practice for this. So I just start singing a cappella. And the whole arena is like, yeah. Yes. And it was like that's a victorious moment in an artist's career. This was Paris, you said? Yes, this was in Paris. Yo, any French people listening? If you, you were there. When you were there, you saw history. You saw it. You saw it. That's crazy. You also saw doing the best with what you got iPod, no tracks, no band. These, kid, these kids don't know about <laughs> They don't know. They don't know about an Oh my Aux God. Score. That is a lost art. Man, can we fast forward now? Because, I mean, you are a Toronto OG. You're a Toronto Canadian staple royalty in the music industry. But you've been in L.A. Mm -hmm. coincidentally during one of the craziest moments in Canadian history, musically, mm -hmm. the Drake and Kendrick beef. Oh, my gosh. I just want to know, what was it like being in L.A.? Because I feel like a lot of Americans, and I say this as American, yeah. just really didn't understand Drake or still don't yeah. completely understand Drake in mm -hmm. Toronto. Mm -hmm. But you do. But you weren't like the ground zero of where the, the shots were coming from. Mm. Um, what was that experience like being in L.A. as a Canadian, hearing this Canadian and L.A. kind of it's, drama? It's it's um, it's crazy because people are expecting everyone to choose sides. Like you, it's like you're looking at people, you're looking to see who's Team Drake, team, who's Team Kendrick. And at the end of the day, it's hip hop. Like it's hip hop. Like. Right. Fans really want to get caught up in that kind of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I know both artists, mm -hmm. and it's just like, if we were to have to choose sides, then nobody would be collaborating. Nobody would have, like, you, people always, somebody is in the industry that doesn't like somebody, somebody. And at the end of the day, that's their business. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, you know, I don't really know what the situation is, but you see the impact of what music can do. And then also you see the impact of, like, how people become personally invested. Mm -hmm. So I actually just, it's a case study for me. Wow. I actually just watch and see how people become fascinated by these types of things. Do people, like, in L.A. know, like, yo, that's Melanie DeFiona from Toronto? Like They know I'm from Toronto. One time, yeah. I, one time I was at a... Um, uh, an open mic, like it was. I was hosting this event, yeah. and the band was like freestyling, and they started playing. Um, they not like us. Like they started playing the music, and I was on a microphone, and I was like, "Hey, hey, hey!" I was like, "No, Drake slander will be tolerated today." I was like, "Toronto in the building," like, and it was funny, you know. Like everybody laughed. We made it a moment because everybody knows I'm from Toronto, right. you know. So like, I rep for my city hard. So you know, it's it was just funny. I was like, "Hey, we ain't doing none of that tonight." But we were in LA. It was a whole LA band, and I was like, "Hey." We gonna chill. We gonna chill. Everybody chill right On now. On the left coast, she didn't leave home. We gonna chill. I like that. Hardly home, but I'm always rapping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> A real one. You know, and speaking about musical moments, like I was telling you last night, I was listening to the suit two singles, and I understand exactly what you're doing with these songs. Mm -hmm. um, I choose you. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the process of of love. Mm -hmm. The process of love. Making the choice every time i have to believe that this was a reflection of your relationship with absolutely husband, correct? yeah absolutely is there a reflect both songs are actually a, a reflection of my journey through love and the process of love say yes mm -hmm. being what we, we, we keep calling like it's the proposal it's the proposal song mm -hmm. it's the let's overcome fear to get to the place of where we know 
this love deserves to be and thrive and live. And if we can just say yes and go forth with trust and faith, with full vulnerability and transparency, we'll get there. And that actually is a reflection of the way I was with my husband when we were dating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were doing this lover's dance of like, I'm in, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out. But it's like, we want to be in, but we're scared or we're coming with our own things. We got to work it out. And I had done a lot of self-work in that time Mm -hmm. where I was also, I've shared this story a hundred times. Like, I told him I loved him first. And, you know, this is like this big thing. People are like, what? Yeah, ladies. Like, who said, why would you? You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> but you know what the thing is? Anyone can do it. Yeah. And the issue is, is that we become so paralyzed by the fear of rejection mm-hmm. that we forget that we can ultimately live in our truth regardless of what's on the other side. Right. Like, I can love you. I don't need you to tell me back. Even if I don't think you love me, I can still love you. Love is like that. Like you could fall in love with somebody and they might not feel the same, but it's okay to say that. Like, what do you lose? Your pride? Okay. Like you didn't get disrespected. That's you, powerful. You just were honest. It's authenticity. It's honesty. And and I feel like you lose nothing from being honest. If you come in with your heart in your hand and say, I am coming in vulnerable, I'm coming in honest, and the other person takes advantage or abuses that or disrespects that, that's their bad karma. Mm. You get to walk away with, hey, I, I put my best foot forward. I have no regrets. You know, but the person who might mishandle you, they're going to have some regrets. Mm-hmm. And that's their work to do. So I just don't want to live my life in any way shape or form in any, you know, going in jaded or going in like, I got to be on my defenses. Like there's logic and there's sense, of course, and there's a very much intuition. Mm-hmm. But I knew in that relationship and in that time, if I want this to become what what I think it can become or we think it can become, I'm not going to say I like did this with one hand tied behind my back. Mm-hmm. Like I came fully, fully vulnerable. So that's what that song represents, Say Yes. And then I choose you, the choice, the power of choice in and out of love it's one of our greatest things that we have and and our life is truly a collection of choices Mm. so as a mother as a wife as an artist i know that i have to choose to show up as that every single day i mean if i did i would if i didn't i'd just like leave and like never come back but like i choose to show up i choose to fight for the love i choose to you know stay in a high very high vibration and i choose to create the from the place i want to create like it's all a choice and i think when we can start to be more empowered by our choices we'll make good choices is this therapy talking or is this like really just lots of experiences both i, 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 I mean both i like, do a therapy both talking. like yeah. everybody should be doing therapy yeah. like I, I, i'm I, everyone should children should go to therapy mm-hmm. like i think that therapy is so important. I've always kind of been like a little mini therapist. I actually always wanted to be a psychologist and a therapist before I, like if I ever had to choose, you know, a a field. Mm -hmm. I've always just really been an empath. When I was young, I said I wanted to be a singing nurse when I grew up. That was like what I wanted to aspire to be. That's interesting. And no, right? I just came up with my own Is there such a thing, a singing nurse? Uh, There is now. Wow. Melanie Thorne, the singing nurse. That's me. Um, (laughs) And I really do feel that way every time I get on a microphone, every time I get to speak. Mm -hmm. That four-year-old version of myself knew exactly who I was supposed to be in this life. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that our youngest versions of ourselves that we can remember, like our most energized, excited, ignited, and and present versions of ourselves Mm -hmm. as children know exactly who we are. And our only job in life is to find the tether back to that soul and to that version. It's going to go like this on the line, but you can always draw back. And every time I felt fulfilled, amounted to what I feel is personal success, um, feel satisfied and happy and joyful in my life, I know four-year-old Melanie is like, yeah, girl, you're doing it. You're doing it. And so that's how I feel. Like, that's how I feel right now. And so I think always remaining in that purpose, considering and, and appointing myself as a healer because what I do and what I create and when I use my gift of my voice That's what I'm here to do is to bring healing spaces for women, for mothers, for the lovers, for anybody who is looking for a space to belong and feel seen and heard. Well, let me tell you, these songs are tethering me back to great times. Yes. So I am very appreciative that you chose this moment to to release this music. Thank you. Is there a particular reason why this moment in time you're like, let's do it now? Because this this is this is the moment. Okay. This was always gonna be the moment. Okay. And even if there were moments before when I thought or I was feeling the pressure of, you gotta hurry up, you gotta hurry up. Like I truly believe nothing before it's time. I truly believe everything is already divine plan. Nothing nothing before before the time. time. Nothing before the time. (laughs) Absolutely. I hear my mother. Nothing before it's time. Like I I I just truly if I reflect on my life 
life and if I'm paying attention mm. to everything that I thought was supposed to happen in a particular time, it never happened out that way. It happened exactly when and how it was supposed to. And that I attribute to even the good, the bad, the high, the low. And I don't really try to consider anything good or bad anymore. It just is. And it's all actually necessary to get to where it is you're supposed to be. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, this is this is great music. Thank you. Two brand new singles from Melanie Fiona. Yes. Say yes. I choose you. They are out now. Consume them. Embrace them. And share them. Share them. Run them up. Yo, big them up to your people. <laughs> Melanie Fiona is back out. She's outside. She's outside. <laughs> okay. She's outside. The kids are inside. Wait, I'm outside. outside. Okay, cool. So we have an EP coming. We have an EP coming. Okay. Are we gonna do some live shows? I mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna be we're outside. Okay. We gotta be outside. outside. Honestly, performing live is my favorite part. Okay. It's my favorite part of what I do. I I feel the most happy on stage. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, connecting with people and using my voice to connect with people is my favorite part. So we're going to be out there. If you are interested or love or haven't listened, listen to the Mama's Den podcast. Oh yeah, it's a good podcast. The Mama's Den podcast. Yeah. I love my girls. We've created a space for mothers and people who are interested in the motherhood experience. We talk about it all. We keep it very real. As you can see, I'm an open book, so mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it real there too, especially there. And just honestly continuing to make more music, mm -hmm. continuing to allow the expansion of my wingspan to be every version of myself that I'm supposed to be in this life. I am saying yes to everything that's waiting for me. Welcome home. One last Thank question. You, yeah. When you get back to Toronto, what's the thing that you're like, oh, I miss this the most? Is there something that makes you feel like, oh yeah, I'm back? It's the people. It's the people. I hear I just am so understood. If I say I'm Guyanese, people know exactly what that is. They know, ah, you're this, you're that. You're... I, kn I don't have to explain myself. I don't have to check a box. People know who I am. I can walk around. I can see the cultures. I know the cultures. I hear the languages. I see the foods. Toronto is truly, truly one of the greatest cities in the, in the world. Um, and there's no place like home. And I'm so forever grateful and proud to be from here. So every time I come home, just being in the streets, and honestly, it's going to sound like so touristy, but when I see the CN Tower, I light up like a child at Christmas. Like I, it just makes me so happy. It just makes me so happy. It's just like such a symbol of home. It's so iconic. Um, you know, I've been in New York, the Empire State Building, I don't feel it. And the Eiffel Tower is pretty special too, but the Empire also, State Building makes me shut a tear. Of course, it's <laughs> that's your talent. I know, I know. But you know, but, but, but I know what you mean you though. Know? When you see your symbols, yes. it's like, it's personal. Yeah, it's it's personal. a person. It's a part of the of my childhood. It's a part yeah. of like my identity. So maybe I should get a CN Tower tattoo. I mean, let's go do that. Let's go do it. You, you get an Empire if, State. Yeah, we'll get. We'll do it together. Boom. Okay, that's what's up. Plans. Welcome that's home. what's coming in the future. That's what's coming. Tattoos, <laughs> music, and tattoos. <laughs> Melanie, it is so wonderful to Thank sit and talk you. with you. It's an honor. Thank you. Likewise. I'm so, I'm so happy you're here. Thank I'm so you. happy we got music. Bring out more music, more shows, and just big up. All right. Absolutely welcome appreciate home. you. Thank you, Melanie Fiona out everywhere now, get it.